Hey there, good people. It's your Cripple Critic, and this week I figure I'd do another top five, this time the least successful games of 2017. Now again, I'm rating these games solely based on how accessible they are. Some of the games on the list are actually great, well, when it comes to their story and gameplay, but some of the games on the list are just unplayable up to a certain point, and that's not cool. Other games on the list may have been made by a developer that's known for having accessible games, but their latest game was just a lot less accessible, which I think needs to be addressed. But the overall message of this top 5 list of least accessible games is please do better developers. Persona 5. Okay, hear me out. I know that Persona 5 had really fun gameplay, the art style was great, the jazzy music was great, I know, I know. But the last two games in the Persona series were almost perfect when it came to accessibility, so it was a little weird to see them take a step back in that department. So I did mention in my full review for the game that Persona 5 does have really simple gameplay mechanics because it's a turn-paced RPG, and those are relatively simple, especially for gamers with fine motor skill impairment. It's just accessing a series of menus, and it's because of that that I debated whether I should even put Persona 5 on this list, but the game does have some problems with accessibility, and these problems weren't in the last two games. For instance, disabled gamers with visual impairments and colorblind players are going to have a difficult time finding certain puzzle items in dungeons. This is because some of these items are distinguished solely by their color. In the last two Persona games, having puzzle items important to major plot points in the story wasn't really a thing, and if there were items like that, it was optional to find them. So I think maybe next time, Atlas should keep in mind colorblind players if they decide to make puzzle items important in the next game. Also, and this next issue isn't as big a deal, but in Persona 5 you're not able to use the left control stick to make decisions during combat, to move in options menus, or even to make decisions in story. Instead you have to use the directional pad. You can only use the left control stick to move your character during dungeons, and I don't really know why. It just makes things more tedious for gamers with fine motor skill impairments, and there's no real point to it. The last two Persona games let you use the left control stick to control just about everything. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, as they say. So yeah, nothing inexcusable in the game, I just don't want to see this awesome company take too many steps back with accessibility. Atlas, I love you, you make great games that have influenced me over the years, but I know you can do better. Number 4. Memoranda. So Memoranda is a quirky point-and-click puzzle game about a girl who can't remember her name. It's got strange dialogue and anthropomorphic talking animals, and that's all well and good. Except that Memoranda is basically unplayable for disabled gamers. It really blows my mind, because point-and-click games are known for being easy to play, because all you ever need is a mouse. Except for some reason Memoranda makes you press several keyboard buttons and the mouse. In Memoranda, there's a menu at the top of the screen you can access to save the game or exit the game, but there's no drop down menu for the inventory, so in order to access it, you have to press the space bar, you can't use the mouse. You also can't access your map using the mouse, you have to press the tab button. And you can't customize any of the keyboard functions either. You might be thinking that, hey, if you're a disabled gamer with fine motor skill impairments, maybe you can use the on-screen keyboard to use the key buttons during the gameplay. That would have been nice, except that the game developers didn't program a way to open the game in windowed mode, so there's no way to use the on-screen keyboard either. In fact, like I said in my full review, the only way I was able to even play the game was I had to search the internet for a third-party program that let me remap the mouse to the keyboard keys. And that's a freaking pain. Deaf players will also have to deal with really inconsistent subtitles, especially for background noises and there's not even a brightness slider you can change for gamers with visual impairments. Yeah, just really basic stuff that most point-and-click games have in their game, this one's just missing almost all of it. I just have to ask why. 
this was an adaptation of a book, so maybe Digital Dragon, the developer, was their first time making an actual game. If so, I'm totally available, guys, to talk about accessibility if you need help understanding it. Memoranda actually had a interesting disabled character in the game, so I mean someone on the development team understands that disabled people at least exist, but I think more research needs to be done to understand how disabled people play games and what they need. This game had a lot of problems, and the only reason it wasn't higher up on the list is, in the end, it just wasn't very memorable. And yeah, I think it's pretty ironic that a game dealing with memory loss ended up being forgettable. Number 3. Vaccine. So, Vaccine sucks. It really sucks. It sucks on so many different levels. It has an excruciatingly difficult learning curve, and it tries to be the classic Resident Evil so much that all it does is remind me of a much better game that I could be playing. But the main problem is that the controls are terrible. You have to use tank controls to move your character, which means you have to move in 180 degrees. Even worse is that for some reason the y-axis is inverted, so you're constantly having to remind yourself to move in the opposite way you normally would. Keep getting confused, run into walls, and then get eaten by zombies. There's also no way to customize any of the controls. On top of that, Vaccine uses cheap methods to make the game more difficult. There's a 30 minute time limit, randomized environments, randomized weapons in each environment, and even the amount of health you get from healing items is randomized. Not fun. Not fun at all. Disabled gamers with fine motor skill impairments will have a really hard time. Yeah, the game's a mess, and there's not much else to say except... If I can give some advice to the developers at Rainy Night Creations, then I'll say this. When you're an indie developer who hasn't made a whole lot of games and not a whole lot of people know who you are, it's important to make sure your games can be played by all types of people. You want a lot of different people to play your game. Otherwise, what's the point? So yeah, do that, please. Number two. Little Nightmares. Uh, I don't want to do this because I really like this game. It's a new IP, it's really creepy, it's got a unique look, and the atmosphere is great. I really, really enjoyed playing it, but it's just got too many problems when it comes to accessibility. Way too many of the buttons on the controller are used for a game that's basically a 2D side-scroller. There's a designated crouch button and a designated lighter button. Also, doing something as simple as climbing a ladder means you have to press two or three different buttons, which is way too complicated. As a disabled gamer with fine motor skill impairments, I was able to finish the game, but the timed missions didn't help. And having to press several different buttons to do something really simple just seems excessive to me. But the biggest problem has to do with deaf players. For deaf players, Little Nightmare is basically inaccessible up to a certain point. When you first encounter one of the giant deformed bosses, which is arguably the most interesting part of the game, you have to hide from them. During these scenes, you have to be able to hear their grunts and noises. It's the only way you can learn to time your actions just right. Being able to hear their grunts lets you know when to run, otherwise you will die continuously and there's no captions available in Little Nightmares. It's imperative for deaf players to have captions in this game, otherwise they might as well not even play it. Little Nightmares is a new IP from Tarsier Studios, but they've worked on other games like the Little Big Planet spin-offs, and those games are a lot more accessible than this. Oh man, if they could just fix these issues, the game would be perfect, but for now, deaf players are not going to be able to play this. Number one! Horizon Zero Dawn. You know, I think I gave this game way too many compliments when I did the full review for it. Yes, the graphics are amazing, the world is unique, and the main character is actually pretty interesting. But I couldn't even finish the game, and a big part of that was because of the controls. Horizon's already one of those games that tries to incorporate every single button on the controller, including the control stick buttons. What's worse is there's no way to remap any of these controls. The game does have an easy mode you can pick that focuses on the story and less on combat. But the biggest problem with playing Horizon is the lack of aim assist. Oh, the game tells you there's an aim assist. If you go in the options menu, you can turn it off and on. But it does nothing. There's no difference between having the aim assist on and having it off. 
If I shot my arrows in the general vicinity of an enemy, the arrow wouldn't curve at all. Confusing and not very helpful. The fact that it says it's working makes me wonder if it's a bug, like a technical issue they could fix later with a patch. I actually reached out to Guerrilla Games on Twitter about the issue, hoping they would fix it, but they never got back to me. As of my recording of this video, I haven't noticed an update for the game that would fix the aim assist problem, so I assume they haven't done anything. I'll admit the story for Horizon didn't really grab me, but the lack of aim assist really stopped me from wanting to even try. The ball's in their court, though. If Guerrilla Games could update Horizon and fix the aim assist problem, then I would give it another go and maybe try and finish the game. But for now, it's still going to be sitting on my shelf. Alright guys, that's my top 5 least successful games of 2017. And I'm serious about talking to developers. If any of the developers of the game have been watching this video, please feel free to contact me. I'd love to give you pointers on how to make your games more accessible. I've talked to other developers in the past, so I do have experience. I do realize that some of the issues can only be addressed early on in development, but a lot of them can be fixed with just a simple patch. Anyway, what do you guys think of this top 5? Do you think there are games that have even less accessible options? Let me know about them in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you later.